what is going on guys we are back playing some more surviving with industrial craft 2 now today guys we're going to be working with processing uranium getting all this stuff set so we can actually start making fuel rods whenever we want to jump into nuclear power now this is a very long process it's going to take a lot of machines a lot of work and it's actually decently expensive so that's why i thought it'd be pretty fun to do today i think it's really interesting but we're gonna to have to jump into it in a minute because it is relatively intricate and probably will take an okay amount of time to set things up now the first thing that I want to cover before we jump into that is that I sound weird. You probably think I sound weird. I know I sound weird. It's because uh, about a week ago during my spring break, uh, of course, I got strep throat, which is great. It ruined my break and worst of all, it meant that I couldn't record videos when I got back to school. So now I'm finally feeling a little bit better uh, and I can record, but my voice is still a little bit hoarse. So I hope you can bear with me. Um, it might be a little bit annoying. I apologize for that, but there's not much I can do about it until I just, you know, heal on my own. So uh, on top of that, I want to say thank you guys so much for 3000 subs. It was a really great way to cheer me up when I got out of bed. I was feeling like crap the whole spring break or, you know, halfway through it since I got strep throat. And, you know, it really did cheer me up when I saw that. And I just wanted to say thank you guys and uh, apologize that I wasn't able to make a video sooner. So now that I've, you know, rambled through all of that, we can actually jump into all the fun stuff that we are going to be doing. So we get to come over here to the project chest and this thing is full of stuff today. Now, usually it's relatively full, but I don't think we've ever had it this full. And that's because we need like four different machines today. Uh, we need a ton of different stuff to actually get things set up today. We need protective wear. We need to use a couple machines to make things to make other machines uh, and all that stuff. We need, you know, protective containment. So uh, that's mainly stemming from the fact that uranium has radiation. It gives off radiation, which is dangerous. It's dangerous in real life. And it's, you know, it's not lethal in Minecraft, but it is a little bit annoying. So to start things off, we are going to be making the protective, you know, wear for ourselves, which is going to be a hazmat suit. Now that involves using the scuba helmet, the hazmat suit, hazmat suit leggings and rubber boots. So we're going to make that whole get up. We're going to look super stupid, but that is why I have all this stuff in here. So we've got the roses, we've got the dandelions, uh, and then I do have to come over here and get some iron and I'm actually gonna have to cook down one piece of glass. So we can throw that in here and we'll let that cook while we're working on the other stuff. Uh, but we have enough rubber. So now we got to turn all of this into dandelion yellow and we should have just enough rose red. Then we can combine these to make orange dye. So we're going to be using orange dye for pretty much all of this. I guess we can start out with the scuba helmet and just grab this glass right here. And we do have to make iron bars. I don't know why this necessarily uses uh, iron bars. I guess it's for reinforcements, but uh, it is a little bit annoying because now we're left with 15 iron bars that we don't need. But yeah, so we got the scuba helmet. So that's the first piece that we need. Then if we search up hazmat, you can get the hazmat suit and hazmat suit leggings. Really easy to make. And these are relatively similar. There we go. Hazmat suit leggings. And lastly, we're going to make some rubber boots. So there we go. So that's what the, that is what the wool would be for. There we go. Okay. So now we get to throw all this stuff on and man, we look so fancy. Look at that. We're ready to go diving. If we had compressed air cells, we could go diving with a scuba helmet. If you have those in your inventory, it will allow you to keep refilling your air, uh, even though it's using those. So that is pretty cool, but mainly we want this for radiation. So yes, now we are protected. We look kind of stupid, but we are protected. So that is good. Now we need to actually get to making the machines, which I'm going to be putting over here. The whole processing area is going to go right over here. Uh, I may move it eventually, but this is really one of the only open spots in here until I expand or make more floors or do something along those lines. Uh, there really isn't room over here. Things are already starting to get cluttered and you know, it's just, uh, it's not good. So uh, we're going to be putting it over here and I'm just probably going to crudely wire all the way over. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is the power generation is going great. This thing should probably be like fully backed up right now. Yeah, this thing's fully backed up. It can't even run anymore. So uh, eventually I will have to upgrade that bat box. But this thing has been working like a charm. If you guys don't know what this is, it's the biogas power generation that I put in the last episode. So you can go check that out if you didn't know about that. But what I plan on doing is setting things up over here. And I guess the wiring can just go right back here. So hopefully we don't need to get up to the cactus farm anytime soon. But we can just break all this. And we'll have to grab, we'll have to grab a little bit more rubber over here. Got a ton of rubber. 
more than I think I will ever need, but it is very handy. So we will be using copper cable. A lot of people question why I use copper cable because this transports 128 EU per tick, which isn't needed for these machines. Uh, these will use like a max of 32. Uh, the main reason I use it is because if I want, you know, this one right here, if I have like four machines running and this can only transport 32 or whatever tin can transport, uh, then it might not be able to fully power like the four machines that are running. But right now this can transport enough to get to every machine in here. So there's no need to worry about any machines not being able to run if everything in there is running. So we're going to run this right along here. And this is not going to be permanent by any means. Uh, we're going to run it like this. And eventually we're going to have to branch it off because I do need to put a pump in there. But now we are going to be making the macerator. Now, of course, we already have a macerator, but because I want to keep this all over in one area and eventually add upgrades to make it fully automatic, uh, you know, I do want to have a macerator over there for it. So two, co or two cobblestone, basic machine casing, a circuit, and some flint. So we got the three flint, the two cobble, a basic machine casing, and what else did I say? Oh, we need one of these electronic circuits. I already have one in my inventory. But you know what, I'll just, I'll keep that up here so we don't get confused. So, macerator, get that out. Now this one is going to go, uh, we can put it right here, and it'll just start getting power. So that's the first step. That's going to get us to crushed uranium ore, and the next thing that we need to do is create an ore washing plant. So essentially that's going to kind of like, I guess you could say purify. Uh, if you've ever played with mechanism, you know that there's like the whole purifying process. This one's kind of like that with water. Uh, so we need to make two things. We need the ore processing plant, which should be, or ore washing plant, which is right here. So we're going to need for that uh, regular casing and two buckets, two electric motors. And so hard for me to remember what these things are. Electronic circuit and then the three iron plates. So we got that going. We can get the ore washing plant. Now this one's a little bit more complicated with how we have to set it up because we do need a pump to put water into this thing. So uh, we're going to have to put this down and we're going to need the water to be coming from pretty much right below. Yeah, that'll be fine. Then we can put this right here. And yes, we will need a pump to put water in that. So my plan will be to put a wire right down here and the pump will go right here and the water can just sit right like this and there doesn't appear to be anything that this is running into so that will not be an issue at all so uh, we can use these buckets to make the infinite pool really quick and then just refill them and now we get to make the pump and it just occurred to me that I might need to hop off camera to make a fluid upgrade I don't know if I'm gonna need to do that or not but uh, I will need to make it. I don't know if I'll need to hop off camera to make it or not. So we need the empty cells, circuit, and the mining pipe, and the tree tap. So, huh. okay, maybe this one is one because it has the tree tap that we can't use this for. So it should be like that. And there we go. Okay, so now we got the pump, which can happily go down here. Now we got to place it so the grate is facing down. So we should be able to do that. I might need to wrench this and then wrench that. So the grate should be facing down now. It is pumping water out. So then we put the ore washing plant back down on top of that. And of course the water isn't coming in there. So let me take a look at what we need for making the fluid. Okay, so electric motor, tin, tin plate. Okay, so that'll actually be relatively easy to make because we are going to have excess motors. So we just need to take these four tin and put them over here in the metal former and we'll let that run while we work on something else. But what we need to do now is make the thermal centrifuge. So the thermal centrifuge is a little bit more of a complicated, not really complicated, but uh, more expensive thing. You can see that now we're getting into, you know, the higher brackets of energy usage. Uh, this one can go up to 128 EU per tick, and it actually is relatively expensive. We have an advanced machine casing, and we have a mining laser. So uh, the worst part about this to make is probably the mining laser, because you need uh, an iron turning blank, which is made into a handle. So this might confuse a couple people, so I will cover this in depth. We are going to be using the we'll use a couple motors we're going to be using the electric kinetic generator 
and we are going to be using this, which is the turning table. So what we need to do is we need to take the kinetic generator and this takes kinetic units. So uh, anything that can generate kinetic units, I know of the kinetic generator, I'm sure other stuff can generate that too, but we're gonna throw this down and this side right here is this side that we need pointing at the turning table. So of course the best way to do that is to just throw some dirt down, get up here and wrench it. And it pretty much is opposite this side right here. So it is now facing this. Now much like the heat generator, this one if you hover here it says add motors to increase KU output. So we'll throw three in there. Now it should be giving us kinetic units so that this system can run. Now we need a lathing tool. So you can get that and you can shift click it in there. It's not expensive at all. And you can then take the iron turning blank. And essentially this is, imagine if you took, um, you know, uh, if you were making a statue and you took a block of marble, which would be this blank right here, and you just started chipping away at it um, progressively, that would be what the lathe is. That'd be the thing that chips it away. And then you get the final product. So this might be a little bit confusing, but essentially if you go on the wiki, it shows you all the different things that you need to, you know, make the drill, handle, uh, all this different stuff when you're using the turning table. So for this one, we want to lathe it to four fifths right here. Uh, we want to make it three fifths right here. And then we want to make it two fifths here, two fifths here, and two fifths here. And you can see this thing is flipping out right now because we've got sticky resin in there and it's not getting any solar power. So I will want to sleep right now just so that that isn't an issue. But pretty much the, the main problem that people might have with this whole system. Oh man, okay, we got to get these out of here because that's going to be annoying. But the whole issue is you, you might over lathe and you can't go back. So be careful about that. You do get tiny piles of dust because you're kind of like scraping stuff off. But now you can see it says we have the handle because we got it right. That's four fifths, three fifths, and then two fifths, two fifths, two fifths. So remember that. You can easily look it up if you need it. So we're going to use this to make the mining laser. So for that, we need the blank, an advanced circuit, an energy crystal, and two redstone and three advanced alloys. So we got the advanced alloy here. I made a little bit too much which was a little bit expensive and I kind of regret it now, but I'm sure we'll use them in the future. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay. So we can't shift click that in there. A little bit disappointing. Uh, trying to remember how this was done. So like that. Yes, it is. Okay. There we go. The mining laser is complete. So little disappointed. We don't get to actually use this as a mining laser, but you know, maybe in the future a little bit. So, now we should be able to craft this. We just got to come over here and grab out one of the electric motors. And let's see if we can shift click that in there. No, we cannot because the mining laser and the whole ID issue. Yay. How does this go like this? I think it should be like this. There we go. Thermal centrifuge. So that can go right here. Very fancy stuff. Uh, now, one thing is that this is going to take time to heat up eventually when we start using it. And one thing to be cautious about, now this, I don't even know if it's getting power right now. Huh. Okay, it is. It's got a really big internal buffer. But when we start using it, it's going to take a while to heat up. If you keep a redstone signal on it, I believe it will use energy, but it will stay heated. So that is very good uh, if you are not really worried about energy. But in our scenario, where we're probably a little bit worried about it, uh, it would probably be in our best interest to not keep it powered since I'm not going to be using it too much. You can see that this is starting to go down because that thing has a massive internal buffer. But now we're almost ready to process this. The last thing we need to do is make a containment device for the uranium. So if we search up containment box and it's got the nice, you know, nuclear symbol on it, the radiation. So it's a lead item casing around the chest because lead is good at preventing radiation from getting to you not per, not stopping it altogether like it won't it won't stop radiation from coming from the uranium but it will prevent it from getting out of this box so if we right click it you can see it's got you know these nice symbols all around it and then it's not as big as a chest but you know it's big enough that we should be able to put all of our uranium in there and not have to worry about it so uh, once we make this fluid upgrade it seems it will be time for us to start processing some uranium and I do have 16 ore I probably would have more, but 
uh, when I'm mining, you know, you only get these in pockets of one or two, and I'm not always inclined to mine it. You know, my inventory is full. I don't want to dump stuff for it because we're not using it yet. So the last thing we need to make is the ejection for the fluid. So that should be, if I recall correctly, just like this. And there we go. Fluid ejector upgrade. So that will go right in here and fill this puppy up. So first things first, we're going to throw this in the macerator. Now this is going to start running, and while that is running, we can cover this up a little bit. I need to, need to get a little bit more stone in here so that we can cover the floor. But this will start running, and we'll put this through the whole process. We'll see how everything's working. So we got the crushed uranium ore, so we're going to take that out, and we're going to put it in here. Now this does take a little bit longer, but it should start washing it. You can see that this starts filling up with blue. And... Uh, this probably is burning through power, absolutely ruining it. So we're going to want to make sure that we don't run the system all the time. But it is a little bit of an interesting project. So, yeah, this is going to have issues with getting power to this thing. I bet this might this might actually fail out when we're trying to run it. But once this finishes with one, we should be good. So we have the purified crushed uranium ore, tiny pile of lead, and stone dust. So I'm actually going to take this out now so that this doesn't waste power. I'm going to take this out now so this doesn't waste power. So, we've got all these, you know, extra things, but right now, really, all we care about is this purified crushed uranium ore. So, we throw that in here, and this system should start running. It's starting to heat up, and the process will go a lot faster when it's already heated, but it does need to heat up, and that will take a decent chunk of time. So, you can see the bar does very slowly fill up. Now, I'm not actually sure if you need it to be fully heated before the process starts, Okay guys, so we are back, and the whole thing just started running, so it does need to be at full heat to run, and pretty much this will turn green when it gets to the required heat, which of course for this one was 3000, it actually says it's at 3001, but it's going to finish in a second, and we get two tiny piles of uranium 235, and then we have the uranium 238. So, we're going to take this out, and typically if you weren't wearing this, you get radiation over here. Uh, as a debuff but of course we got the hazmat suit on and now we're going to throw this in here so now our uranium is contained we don't need to worry about it and if we wanted to we could go uh making this into a refined uranium eventually and then make it into a fuel rod so if we did want to make this into a fuel rod we could go right here uranium fuel rod and we could make the enriched uranium uh using this and the tiny piles of uranium 235 and put that in a canning machine to make this uh, fuel rod. And of course, that is what we will use for nuclear power. So that is the whole process of actually getting everything pretty much up until that point. Eventually, we will use this, but we're not going to use it today. So thanks for watching, guys. If you found the video useful or entertaining or you know anything like that, uh, feel free to give it a like. I do apologize for my voice. Uh, it seems to be getting worse as I've been talking a lot. So that's why I'm starting to call things quits. You can probably hear it's getting pretty bad. <clears throat> but... Uh, like I said, thanks again for uh, 3,000 subscribers. It, it means so much to me, and you guys have really been great with the last couple of series I've been doing, the Surviving With series. You've really been enjoying them, so thank you for supporting the channel like that, and I will talk to you guys later.